Enar Zhangen, who's a China analyst. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, very strong language and words in that uh, memo and coming from the president and from, from, uh, from the US. Um, but specifically, when President Trump says China could have stopped the virus sweeping the globe, are there any, is there any truth to this claim, do you believe? Well, it's not a question of belief. Uh, you should pay attention to the medical experts, and they will tell you that that is not the case at all. Um, it, you know, what's interesting about this memo is that there's only one issue, China. China is the enemy. China is the adversary. Uh, China needs to be stopped. Now, this is unusual because this is a, a campaign, and despite uh, what has been said, everything is, is couched in terms of defending Donald Trump. So, yes, it can be used by uh, Republicans, but it's mainly focused on how Trump is going to respond to this and him as president. So, you know, Beijing is looking at this and saying this is a political hit job. But, you know, they're surprised at the vehemence and the single-mindedness of this kind of attack. But, Aina, it isn't just uh, the U.S. Over the past few weeks, we've seen um, the Australian government, the U.K. public, uh, build newspaper in Germany, there is a lot of people, there are a lot of people and countries angry with China's handling uh, of the crisis. What is China's response to this? And do they think this is going to go away? Well, I, I don't know that China thinks it's going to go away, but they do feel a little bit aggrieved. I mean, this is a situation kind of like in the U.S. There's a a uh, young uh, woman who was uh, at the military games in China, and she's been accused of spreading the virus by conspiracy theorists. And this is what you, in essence, have. There's a commonality between um, many of the accusations and the, the countries. And basically, it's, it's uh, leaders who failed to prepare adequately and then were surprised when the coronavirus was COVID-19 was so uh, rampant. And now, you know, it's not their fault for... Um, trying to, for failing to prepare, it is really the fault of China. It, it's not clear how this would go. If you read any uh, scientific uh, timeline of this, uh, it's very clear that's not the case. Um, you know, look at the WTO, although uh, obviously Donald Trump is trying to say that they are somehow in league with China. Why? It's not clear. But these are the kinds of things. If somebody asked you, have you stopped beating your wife? You would say, look, I don't beat my wife. But you know, it's already insinuated in there that you are doing something wrong. And this is what uh, China feels aggrieved about, is that they think they've done everything right, that they've been transparent, more transparent than they've ever been. And instead of being, uh, you know, <laughs> applauded for this, uh, they're being punished. Anything they do is wrong. If they don't help somebody, they are inhuman. If they do help them, they're playing political games. So at this point, China is kind of perplexed uh, by the international reaction. And Anna, what um, impact right now on, on U.S.-China relations is this uh, war of words having? Well, it's it's going to uh, impact, uh, especially long term. You're you're seeing a movement of negative uh, opinions about China, and that's going around the world, and it's fueled by this kind of uh, you know by things like this where. Uh, the press is talking about it. People say, well, where there's smoke, there's fire, without necessarily looking at the facts. Uh, they're looking at the repetition. So at this point, uh, China and the U.S. are falling further apart. The question is, what does the rest of the world see? At the end, in the cold light of day, there's going to be a huge number of bodies in the U.S., a failed attempt to control it. Uh, there's going to be more economic damage. Uh, in China, it seems that they've, it's so far, and you never know what's going to happen next. But they seem to contain it, and they're trying to get their economy back online. So in years to come, I think it'll be very clear that the lessons of history will be that China was doing the right thing and that this was just simply a political ploy by somebody who is desperate to uh, be reelected for various reasons, not only power, but the potential for uh, actions against him and his family. Aina Tangan, China analyst speaking to us for, from Beijing. Thank you so much for making time for us today.